Ever since I was little, I've wanted to come to the Isle of Wight, and finally, I'm here. I've heard that there's plenty to do and loads of things to see, and who better to tell me about them than David Thornton, who's the head of the island's tourist authority. David, the first question I have is, is the island motorhome friendly? Yes, of course it is. I mean, we do have some fairly narrow roads, it has to be said, but of course on the plus side, there's not that many cars on them. So you can get a sense of being out there in the great outdoors, uh, but uh, you know, never far from too much of the action. What about places to stay? Yeah, well, there's plenty of places. We have fantastic holiday parks, which will give you live entertainment through the night and pools and uh, recreation facilities. But we've also got those wonderful sort of quiet back to nature sites where you can sort of just spend life under the stars. Sounds great. During the day, give me an idea of some of the things I can go and visit. I'm here for a few days. OK, well, you'd struggle to fit everything in if you were only here for a few days. You know, I would say if you've been waiting since you were a little boy to come to the island, you know, I would say, you know, at least come for a week and spend a bit longer with us. What we like to pride ourselves on is the sort of place that doesn't matter whether you're a prince or you're a pauper, you know, we've got something for you. I mean, at the end of the day, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert both had their holidays here on the Isle of Wight. They even built their own palace by the sea. That is a fantastic place to have a look around. If you've got time, you really must do that. Well, it's running a bit late, but I am going to go and have a look. I'm going to go now. Thank All you ever so much. It's a pleasure. So that's where we headed, north of the island, to visit the royal holiday spot, Osborne House. Osborne House itself was largely designed by Prince Albert, who had been inspired by a trip to Italy. And he wanted to recreate a bit of Italian style here on the Isle of Wight. As for Queen Victoria herself, I always thought that she was a bit of a prude. But as you can see from these original statues, I was wrong. There are hundreds of rooms in Osborne House. This is just one of them. It's the council room, and it's where Queen Victoria would have entertained visiting dignitaries, such as Prime Ministers Gladstone and Disraeli, as well as people such as Alexander Graham Bell, who actually demonstrated his newfangled telephone device to Queen Victoria right there. With the beautiful gardens outside, that great beach with paintings in almost every room and statues along every corridor. There's so much to see in Osborne House that you're going to have to spend a whole day to appreciate it all. But believe me, it'll be well worthwhile. No trip to Osborne House would be complete without a trip down to Queen Victoria's very own private beach. It's small, but it's perfectly formed. It's absolutely beautiful. Over here, you can see the alcove where she used to sit and paint watercolours. And behind me here, that's her very own bathing machine that she used to get into and get towed out into the sea whenever she felt like having a dip. A little further south, you'll find the island's charming heritage steam railway, and there's plenty of space to park the motorhome. Some people say that when you visit the Isle of Wight, it's like stepping back in time 15 or 20 years. But I have come to a place where we can go back more than a century. It's everything you'd expect from a Victorian and Edwardian railway station. The sights, the sounds, and the smells of the steam engines. Here, you travel back to a bygone era in every sense. Even the staff are in uniform. It's at times like this when you need smell o vision Standing here really does smell and feel like you've been transported back in time. And look, there she goes. The railway runs on five miles, and that's pretty much all that's left of what was originally 53 miles of track running around the whole island. They've reproduced here a turn of the 19th century railway station with all the original buildings and everything to give an absolutely fabulous atmosphere. 
It's mostly run by volunteers and I'm going to go and talk to one of them now in the signal box. Oh wow, look at that. This looks so complicated, but fortunately I've got the signal on here, David, who's going to actually tell me a little bit about how it works. Right, basically from here we operate the railway, we control all the points and signals so that we determine where the train goes and when it's safe for it to go. And how old is all this equipment? It's all Victorian technology. This particular frame was put in in 1926 and it's still doing the job it was put here to do. Fantastic. There it is, Victorian technology at its very, very best here at Haven Street on the Isle of Wight. Thank you. At the most westerly point of the island, you'll find Needles Park, where there are lots of activities for the whole family. There are fairground rides and giant inflatable balls with children inside. But the most popular attraction at the park is the chairlift. Be seeing you. If you don't like heights, you might think twice about this one, but believe me, the views make it really worthwhile. Just don't look down. You can see how glass is made and then buy it in the shop afterwards. I kept a safe distance. These guys are clearly hot stuff. It's impressive work, this glass making business, and the results, well, just look at these. I can see one of those on the dashboard of my motorhome. If you've got a sweet tooth, you'll love the sweet factory. Here you can see every step of the sweet making process. The age old recipes originate as far back as the 19th century and look, they have every kind of sweet you could imagine. I'll just give one of these a try. No matter how old you are, you really shouldn't miss Black Gang Chine. It's the oldest theme park in the whole UK. A chine is a gap in the sea cliffs. Centuries ago, Black Gang Chine, where I am now, was frequented by fishermen and pirates. In 1843, it opened up as pleasure gardens to the public, but now it's a theme park with loads going on. And I'm gonna have a look around. In 1844, a thin whale was stranded on the beach at the Needles. Alexander de Bell, who owned the park, thought that its skeleton would make a great attraction and bring in the visitors. 170 years later, it still does. No matter how old you are, I reckon you're going to have a great time here, but one thing that they can't guarantee is the weather. So it's a good thing that there are plenty of attractions inside in the dry, like here, Rumpus Mansion, which I'm told is haunted. Oh! Oh! Ah! Ah! <laughs> Thank goodness for the crooked house! But it's all gone a little bit wobbly. Oh! <laughs> God. The newest attraction here is dinosaurs. And I don't just mean little plastic miniature dinosaurs. I mean real dinosaurs. Like this Tyrannosaurus Rex. Down, boy, down! <laughs> 